In this video, we're going to be calculating the extension force and retraction force for a double acting cylinder. Now, the first thing that is important to point out is the force during extension, or the force that the double acting cylinder can exert when it's extending, is going to be higher than the force that it can exert when it's retracting. And there's a key reason for that. If we look at our double acting cylinder, and first of all, let's consider the extension stroke. When the cylinder is extending, we have a buildup of pressure behind the piston head. Now that pressure acts on what we call the full bore of the cylinder. And by the full bore, we mean the area of the piston head. That pressure is being applied to this full area here. Now, as we will see in a moment, the area is directly proportional to the force. Now, if we consider the retraction stroke, when the cylinder retracts, pressure builds up in front of the piston head. Now, that buildup of pressure this time acts on a smaller area. It acts on what we call the area of the annulus. And the annulus is going to be the area of the piston head minus the area of the piston rod. So hopefully you can see from my illustration there that the pressure can only act on this area, which is known as the annulus. Whereas when the cylinder is extending, the pressure can act on the full bore because the piston rod is only present at the front of the cylinder. So we only have one formula that we need to use for these calculations. And the formula that we're going to use, you will have seen before, pressure is force divided by area, or written another way, force is pressure times area. So let's begin by calculating the force on the extension stroke. So the force on the extension stroke is equal to the pressure in the system times the area, but it's the full bore area. And I'm just going to write F subscript B to indicate this. Now we know the system pressure, the system pressure is 45 megapascals as given in the question. And we can calculate the full bore area because it's going to be the area of our piston head. The piston head is the part of the cylinder that makes contact with the piston body. So by full bore, we mean the full bore of the cylinder or the full area across the cylinder. So we can rewrite our formula. The force on extension is the pressure and our area then is pi times the radius squared. Pi times the radius and it's the radius of our piston head squared. Well, we can add the radius of our piston head to our list of variables. The radius of the piston head, RH, is just half of the diameter of the piston head. So in this case, it's 47 millimeters. Now, just before we plug any values in, we need to remember to convert all of these variables to SI units. So 47 millimeters, becomes 0.047 meters, dividing by a thousand, and 45 megapascals is the same as 45 times 10 to the 6 pascals. So our calculation now becomes Fe equals the pressure, 45 times 10 to the 6, multiplied by pi times 0.047 squared. Now we can run that through our calculator and we get an answer of 312,290. But let's express that in kilonewtons and that will be 312.3 kilonewtons. Now, as we said previously, we would expect the retraction force to be less than the extension force because the pressure acts across a smaller area. So let's do that calculation now. We have the force of retraction equals the pressure times the area of the annulus this time. And I'll just put subscript AN to represent annulus. We can rewrite that pressure times 
Well, we already said that the area of the annulus was the full bore area minus the area of the piston rod. Let's just repeat our sketch. We have the full bore area minus the area for piston rod. Now, before we calculate that, we're going to need to know the radius of our piston rod. So again, we'll add this to our list of variables. We have the radius of the rod equals half the diameter of the rod, so eight millimeters. And if we divide that by a thousand, we'll get 0 0.008 meters. So let's return to our formula. The area of the annulus, as we've already said, is pi times the radius of the piston head squared minus pi times the radius of the piston rod squared. Just take care here because the pi times rh squared minus pi times rr squared needs to sit in brackets. That area needs to be calculated prior to multiplying by the pressure. Now finally, we have 45 times 10 to the 6 for our pressure. The pressure is the same on extension and retraction. Our area is pi times radius squared, pi times radius of piston rod, 0 0.008 squared. Now running that through the calculator gives us a force on retraction equal to 303,242, or expressing that in kilonewtons, 303.2 kilonewtons. So as we can see here, we have a force on extension of 312.3 kilonewtons, and we have a force on retraction of 303.2 kilonewtons. It is worth mentioning that if the diameter of the piston rod increases, then the difference between the force on extension and the force on retraction is going to be greater.